Hello and welcome to the CPOL tutorial. In this video I will show you how you can easily access, manipulate, visualize and export ALOS KNC mosaics using the CPOL platform. Note that for using this app CPOL needs to be connected to your Google account that you are using for Earth Engine. In order to get started, log into the CPOL platform. You should now have the start screen in front of you. At the very first, you should decide if you want to export the mosaics to an Earth Engine asset or if you need to download the data to your CPOL workspace. For the second case, and in particular for larger areas, it is important to first select a more powerful instance from the terminal that you need to launch by yourself. Therefore, we click on the terminal symbol on the left. Consider that the given task is mainly limited by memory. We should therefore select one of the memory optimized instances starting with an R. I select the R4 instance by typing R4 and press enter. This instance has 4 CPUs and 32 GB of RAM and should be sufficient in most cases. Only if you have very large areas, consider selecting a bigger machine with more RAM available. As we have to wait a moment until the machine is launched, I want to take the opportunity to give you some brief background information on the ALOS Kyoto and Carbon Initiative. The ALOS Kyoto and Carbon Initiative is an international collaborative research project led by the Earth Observation Research Center of the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency JAXA and was initiated back in 2001. It covers a wide range of climate-related research topics by provisioning spaceborne data and derived thematic products, mainly from the L-band radar missions JIRS-1, ALOS-1 and 2, and in future also from the upcoming ALOS-4 mission. One of the outstanding products of the initiative are the global backscatter mosaics and the associated forest on forest maps. Those two products are available on a yearly basis for both the ALOS-1 and ALOS-2 mission, spanning the years 2007 until 2010 and from 2015 onwards. L-band radar data proved to be useful for a variety of forest application, ranging from simple forest mass to more complex products of forest attributes such as biomass or products of forest change. The advantage of having acquisitions not being affected by cloud coverage turns out to be an important benefit over the tropics. Furthermore, the sensitivity to structural forest attributes is an ideal feature which complements the spectral information from optical sensors such as Landsat or Sentinel-2 in a multi-sensor setting. Access to the raw L-band data has been traditionally costly and its processing necessitates specific knowledge and software for radar sensors. With the provision of the ALOS KNC mosaics, JAXA addressed those issues and provides fully pre-processed data for the entire globe for free. As this data has been made available on Google's Earth Engine, instant visualization and access is feasible on CPOL. Therefore, CPOL users have a tailored module at their fingertips that allows them to select the data for their specific AOI and a specified year, add additional processing steps such as speckle filtering or masking of layer and shadow areas, visualize the data on the fly including the standard RGB composite, the radar forest degradation index, as well as the associated forest on forest map from JAXA. And finally, export the manipulated data either as an Earth Engine asset or to the CPOL workspace. Additional layers such as texture or metadata can be selected by the user. This is what I'm going to show you right now. After the machine is initialized, you will see your username add and a combination of letters and numbers. You are now ready to launch the app with a powerful instance that you just launched. Therefore, click on the wrench symbol on the left. You can now use the search bar and type in ALOS to directly find the app. Click on ALOS KNC Mosaics App Launcher popping up. Now it will take another short moment to launch the app. Once the app appears on your screen, you start with the selection of your area of interest. Therefore, just click on the AOI selection method. You are now given different options. You can either select a country boundary directly, draw a shape on the map that you see on the right, upload a geographic vector file, or copy in the path to an existing Earth Engine asset. For our case, we will use the country boundaries of Equatorial Guinea in Central Africa a 
country that is very much affected by cloud coverage throughout the whole year. Click on the button Select these inputs to confirm your selection. We can now navigate to the parameter section by clicking on the menu entry on the left. Here we first have to select the year of the composite we want to obtain. I will select the most recent 2017. We can also apply additional speckle filter to this composite. Note that for visualization the refined leaf filter is zoom dependent, meaning that the further you zoom out, the blurrier it will appear. That won't be the case for the export, however. I select the Keegan filter that uses both spatial as well as multi-temporal information from the other composites to smooth the image. This usually results in the best noise suppression. Two additional switches allow me to, first, automatically mask out affected areas by layer one shadow, and second, if the data should be represented in the logarithmic dB or the linear power scale. Those are two different ways of scaling and, depending on the selection, make certain features more visible. Usually, dB scaling is preferred over linear scaling. Finally, we use the click button to submit the selection of parameters to the app. We can now change to the visualization menu to instantly have a look at the data. By default, the app shows the standard RGB composite with HH in red, HV in green and their respective power ratio in blue. Using the mouse wheel you can zoom in and by holding the left mouse button clicked you can move around. In this specific radar composite, light green tones are forested areas, whereas black areas depict water bodies. Pink tones resemble foremost urban areas, but around rivers indicate standing water below the forest canopy. Let's switch now to the radar forest degradation index. While based on the different imaging principle, this index is somewhat comparable to the NDVI from optical imagery, meaning that green tones depict the presence of forest vegetation, while yellowish shades indicate its absence. Last but not least, we can select the Kyoto Carbon and Forest Non-Forest Thematic Layer. The map contains three classes, forest in green, non-forest in pale yellow and water in blue. If we are satisfied with what we are seeing, we can move on and export the imagery selecting the export menu on the left. Here we have the possibility to either export the images as Earth Engine asset or to download it via Earth Engine directly to our CPOL workspace. By default, the export contains the two backscatter bands as well as the HH HV power ratio. In addition, the radar de forest degradation index is selected. Some studies suggest the use of textures for classification tasks, as it adds further valuable information. As this will considerably increase the export time, we won't select it now for this example. We can also export the metadata layers that are delivered with each yearly composite, including the acquisition date of each pixel, the local incidence angle, as well as a quality flag that indicates layover and shadow areas and more. Note that everything you select for the first two switches will be merged into a single multi-band file. Instead, the export of the forest non-forest map, if selected, is always stored as a separate file. Last but not least, you can determine the resolution of the exported layers in meters. The minimum value is 25, as this is the native resolution of the dataset. For demonstrating purposes and to speed up the export, I will set the value to 1000. We now can click on the export to CPOL button. Below you can see some info on the status. Please note that you should not click anywhere else within the app for the time of the export, as this will block the app. What we can do instead is to go to the Earth Engine code editor. After a couple of seconds we should see an active task within the task tab. This means the process has been successfully submitted to Earth Engine. We can now go back to our app and wait until our GEE task will be completed. After that step, the data is automatically transferred to CPOL. The full process is finalized when the status window shows download completed. Our data is automatically stored in the CPOL workspace under the folder module results ALOS KC. The name of the file is automatically generated based on the options we selected for manipulation and export. In our example, 
we can see the ESO3 code of Equatorial Guinea, G and Q, Keegan for using the Keegan Speckle Filter, RFDI for having added the rate of forest degradation index to the export, Masks for the applied layover shadow mask, and DB for logarithmic DB scaling. The file is a GeoTIFF file that can be handled by any GIS environment, as well as via programmatic tools such as the GDL libraries or within Python or R. Although we suggest to keep working on CPOL for the generation of your final product, we have the possibility to download the file locally by explicitly clicking on it and then use the download button at the top right. Now you should possess all the necessary information to autonomously handle the CPOL module for the creation and manipulation of ALOS KNC mosaics. Thank you for watching.